the bikers set out two hours after the cars with all the riders anticipating a close and tough race. It's going to be tight racing, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Willie's itching for a win. Everybody's itching for a win, you know? Uh, listen, it's just going to be one... It's going to be a big flat-out race from the beginning. I think any one of the first five or six bikes has got a chance of getting away, but you know, I think it's a little bit wet, so it's going to be difficult to make a break, and we're pretty evenly matched, so it's going to be quite close. I think it will be a good race today. It's nothing cool. I mean, we might have a little bit of dust. I'm sure, we will have dust. Right from the start, it was clear that in the heat of battle, some well-laid plans were going to be thrown out the window. Some fancy riders were not going to allow anyone to pull out a substantial lead. And with chargers like Willie Ireland in the field, the pace could be a quick one. Everyone was also relishing the prospect of a good battle of the 500s between Errol Dalton and Jeremy Davies. On a donkey cart may be slower, but it is more comfortable than riding a motorcycle across country. And there are some serious thorns in the Western Transvaal to make life uncomfortable. Willie Ireland had jumped into the lead with Patrick Andrews fighting into second place. Alfie Cox was intent on making up for lost ground in third place, with Jeremy Davies thumping along on the four-stroke Honda. Richard Manning was in front in the 200 class on the Winston Yamaha. He was being closely followed by Alex Bowles on the Antelex Dairy Kawasaki. A race within a race was developing among the top 200 riders Steve Stoffberg on the second Winston Yamaha not far behind Bounce. There was another change up front when Jeremy Davies was first into the refuel at Stilnik. He was followed by Alfie Cox and Patrick Andrews, with Ireland dropping back after damaging a wheel. Errol Dalton was still well placed, but on the run into the finish, there was no stopping Cox. In dry conditions, the lighter and more maneuverable 250 machine gave Cox a slight edge. He pulled a two-minute gap over Jeremy Davies with the two Castrol Honda riders leaving the rest of the field floundering. The section from the final refuel to the finish saw Cox and Davies show their class. Although Davies came in two minutes behind his fellow Springbok, he had opened up a decisive 12-minute gap over third-placed Patrick Andrews. Broken exhaust also hampered Davies, but it was clear that barring mechanical problems or mishaps, the two Honda riders would have the race to themselves on the final day. Even Cox was relishing the prospects of a good scrap with his friend and rival. Uh, well, Jeremy and I always have a good race. I, mean, we've, I don't know, we just, we just bad dreams together. Every time you look back, either one of us are behind, you know. But it's going to be a good dance, yes. <laughs> At the end of the day, Richard Manning still led the 200 class ahead of Vowles and Stoffberg, although he wasn't always happy with the route marking. Notable names in the top 10 were Gray McLaughlin, who had worked his way up from 45th place after a disastrous first day, and Willie Island. Island was back in the top 10 after a string of misfortunes. As expected, the fight category was a two-horse race. The Castrol Honda pair of Alfie Cox and Jeremy Davies had matters all to themselves with an intriguing battle developing between the pair. Cox held the upper hand for most of the day, but there was more drama when the pair arrived at the final refuel almost side by side. While Davies was forced to answer a call of nature, Cox seized the opportunity to grab the initiative. You could almost say Davies was caught with his pants down. The vital seconds Davies lost were to prove decisive, and Cox went on to reverse last year's result when he finished second to his fellow Springbok. I led for most of the way, and I got a little bit lost. He got in front. And then uh, I knew yesterday I'd pulled two minutes in one section on him, so I knew if I came out the service point in front of him, I could go hard and then maybe keep the lead all the way home. 
and that's what I've done. I'm very happy with it. Sweet revenge for Alfie Cox. A great recovery saw Willie Ireland into third place, albeit over 30 minutes behind Davies. Errol Dalton and Patrick Andrews completed the top five. Cox took the 250 class, Davies the 500 honours, with Stoffberg sneaking in ahead of Vowles and Manning in the 200 class.